Uh, today I'm going to be replacing the sensor for the, therm the uh, thermos on this front driver's side portion. I'm going to re be uh, where is it? replacing, pulling this. And I've already pulled the bolt here and the one here. And then there's just the one right there. And uh, once you do all that, you'll have complete access to this. Of course with the bolts you'll just unscrew them but with this style um, you'll just pop the head and pull it all out. It'll allow this to compress and then when you reinstall it and you push that forward these will uh, engage the plastic better. Alright all right, so obviously you've jacked this thing up and uh, have pulled it free. You don't have to remove the ones going over to the wheel well. And I really don't like to take the tire off because that gives you an extra measure. You know, if your jack was to fail, the car rolled a little bit. At least the tire would be there to protect you. Anyhow, here is the sensor that we're talking about. And... Uh, there's a drain valve right here and what I'm going to do is just put a hose on that drain valve. Of course you don't have to but uh, I'm going to be saving the fluid because I've just recently changed this and now I'm getting ready to change the thermostat so uh, you can adjust the height but anyway I'm just going to unscrew this uh, but again if you had a large pan and you wanted to and you weren't planning on saving yours then obviously you could just unscrew this and let it fly into the pan but I'm gonna be collecting mine as mine is new and uh, all you have to do is unscrew this and uh, the place I found local that actually had one of these was Napa and they got a little bit of a funny design but uh i've got no heat in my car so that's why i'm getting ready to replace the the radiator but that thermos if you're wanting to know it's just right above here and this uh measures the coolant temperature you know next to that but yeah i'm just gonna drain it you would just take this one out after you drain it and uh replace it with your new one now this one came with an o-ring so i swapped o-rings the new one came with a piece of steel that would go in between here and uh really didn't like that design so i kept the o-ring and uh, i still kept the washer that came with the new one but uh you know just in case the o-ring failed i'd have that but Hey, that's it, and I'll show you a refill procedure a little bit later. Alright, so refilling this thing, I ended up refilling the coolant tank, overflow tank, and I would hold this funnel with one hand and fill with the other, and it would slowly trickle down, fill, slowly trickle down, fill, slowly trickle down. I'd also reach down here with the car not hot, you know, in the car in the cold state, and I would squeeze this trying to force any air bubbles out and that only gets you so far as well so I ended up starting the car and I'm not recommend you do this with the cap off I did but you know do as I say not as I do <laughs> never heard that one right anyhow I started mine with the car off and the pump would kick on and I would slowly pour it in here and after I couldn't get any more, I'd close it up completely, the coolant reservoir and this, let it flow a little bit, turn it off, let it sit, let it cool down, refill, refill. And to my understanding, these things are hard to burp, even if you're a technician. Now, they might have some uh, fancy way of forcing the pump to come on and uh you know purging the air bubbles like that but my understanding is that even they still have 
a difficult time getting all the air out of these things. So, start it up, leave the cap on for safety, let it circulate, turn it off, come back when it's cooled down, pour some more in. But I, I found that just pouring it in all the way to the top so that there's a little bit of pressure. Uh, the other thing you can do is put some o-rings on this jam it down in there so that you had a height difference and therefore a pressure difference and you can fill this up or you might try inverting something else in there but if you found a larger funnel neck and jam that down in there that would get some more top pressure on that to help get those bubbles out but that's about it it's not really a tough job uh, actually the toughest th part about this thing is getting all the air out but if you measure how much coolant you take out of the system uh, then you can measure how much you put back in whether you're reusing that same coolant or getting it from a new bottle so but that's the best tips I can give you appreciate everything see you